Hi there boys and girls, Brucey here. How are you all doing out there? I hope you are doing exceptionally, exceptionally well. This is a follow-up video to a video I just did on which DA double do you use? Uh, the answer to that was logic and in the video I explain all the reasons why I chose logic. This video is about which DAW should you choose? DAW choice is very, very personal, but I appreciate that it is a big investment and some of you may not be as fortunate as me to either work in teaching environments or retail environments back in the past where we got our hands on all DAW so you could always try them out and figure out which ones worked for you best and kind of suited the way that you worked. Now that is the key point. Forget about all the nonsense you hear on the internet, probably including this very video. You need to choose the tool that works in the way that you like to work and enables you to get the job done. If you take all the stuff that's written about the uh, devils and this is better, blah, 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 you know how it goes online. If you can throw all that stuff and think of it as a tool and imagine how ludicrous that argument would be if it was over something like a hammer. You know, a Bosch hammer being better than a Black & Deck hammer. But if you hired a tradesman to come in to put a nail in the wall, would you give a flying... You wouldn't give a... I'm not going to swear. Uh, about what hammer they used. You just want the nail in the wall. And that is how it pretty much is from a DAW perspective. If you are working for clients, they pretty much do not care what you use as long as you produce an amazing stereo file for them to take away uh, and work with. Now, a few caveats there. If you are working with other studios and other producers or uh, other post facilities, then maybe you need to be in line with the tools that they are using. That's another point. But if you are just working for clients or you're working for producing your own material, then it really doesn't matter. Think of it like a word processor. Word pages, notepad, you know, they can, you can write letters in them. You can do all that stuff. Sometimes the key commands might be in different places. Sometimes one might have a function that the other one does. From a basic job perspective, you can do all you need to do within that word processor. And the end result is a letter or a report or a CV or something along those lines. And when you hand that to someone, when you send that to someone, do they really care what word processor you used? No, it is the end result. And that should always be what you think about when you are going off thinking about DAWs. But there are lots of choices out there. So how do you make that choice? Well, one thing I would just say is be honest with yourself. There is a strong distinction about a couple of different DAWs and where that might guide your choice towards. So part of what you need to do is be honest with yourself about what it is you want to do with your music and your studio or whatever. And that will inform your choice in the direction that that might need to go. So what do I mean by that? I would say, and this is my advice, if you are musically focused, if you are writing music, composing music, recording your own stuff with no intention of running a studio, uh, running a post-production facility, and you are working with a combination of MIDI and audio and virtual instruments, and that's what you enjoy, and that's where your brain lies, your creative brain is over there, then you pretty much are gonna look at some of the big three or four. So you're gonna be looking at Logic, you're gonna be looking at Cubase, you're going to be looking at Ableton, you may be looking at Digital Performer, and you may be looking now at Studio One, which is coming up through the ranks. I'm not gonna talk about Fruity Loops here because I think it's still early days for Fruity Loops. I know a lot of people producing beats and things like that are using Fruity Loops. I know that it has come on leaps and bounds, but I just don't think it's quite there yet in terms of the functionality that some of the bigger tools have had. But by all means, you could maybe lump Fruity Loops in there. If on the other hand, this hand over here, you are doing audio, you are doing voiceover, you're doing dialogue editing, you are doing sound for picture, you are doing sound design for pictures, you are creating sample libraries, you're doing all these kind of things, then I think your choices are very different because you are therefore more in the engineering side of 
this world. And therefore, I believe your tools would be probably Pro Tools should be at the top, or maybe even Reaper, as I've mentioned in uh, a talk before. You could even consider something like Adobe Audition. It is a very, it's a very different mindset. And part of that comes about from the, the history of where these tools came from. Logic, Cubase, Digital Performer, we're talking about the ones that have been around for a long time, were MIDI sequencers that added audio to them. Pro Tools was a audio editor that added MIDI to it. See, there's an important differential between the two different tools there and why one excels probably a little bit more in one field than the others excel in that field. Ableton is a kind of one that's a little bit out there because, again, if you look at the history of where Ableton came from, it's very much a DJ looping tool, which has now become a fully fledged DAW. Now, I've had some students uh, who wanted a challenge and they tried to do some sound for picture in Ableton, and it was a bit of a nightmare because um, things to do with aligning and spotting to time code just didn't really work, and it was a, it was a complete pain in the backside. But if you are a performer, if you are a DJ, if you are making beats, if you are really into looping and loop-based music, then Ableton should be your number one. How does this help you? What you need to do personally is write down a list of your priorities. And I'm more than happy if you want to bring that list, send it to me, and I will uh, argue out some of the things for you and maybe point you in the direction of where you should be looking. But hopefully this little video now differentiates where you may want to start looking based on whether you feel you're a musician, whether you feel you're doing DJ looping stuff, or whether you feel you're doing audio engineering. Also, in the audio engineering category, as I would say, if you are planning to open a studio facility to the public uh, and get people in and get bands in, then probably Pro Tools is going to be your number one because it just it's great at doing that kind of stuff acting like a tape machine that runs in the background the editing is great it's set up to work that way that doesn't mean you can't recall bands and there are plenty of studios using logic and cubase don't get me wrong but there might be a bit more of an expectation if you're trying to run a professional commercial facility that you would have pro tools so you can send the files to other studios and the pro tool sessions and all that stuff just to make life a bit easier. Again, if you are in post-production audio, then Pro Tools is the standard there. So if you're going to work in that world, then you need to be investing in learning Pro Tools. Now we've kind of made a distinction of where we might be looking. What other factors come into play? Well, as I've mentioned before, I use Logic and I have no issue promoting and talking about Logic, again, because I know it so well. But Bang for buck. That is how much you pay. There is probably no beating logic. You get so many instruments. You get so many plugins. You get so many loops. You get Drummer, which is an awesome tool for, for songwriting and creating. And the, the reason being is that you have to buy an expensive dongle, which is a Mac. That's how they get you. That's how they can do this. This is how Apple does this. It's the loss leader for them. So if you are in the Mac universe, if you're wanting a Mac, then I would say that Logic pretty much is a no-brainer based on cost, based on what you get for the money that you spend. Likewise, Cubase and Studio One are kind of catching up, but they, they still don't offer the same amount of additional material, additional plugins, additional instruments that Logic does. The benefit being, though, is you can run those on other platforms. And now, in 2019, when I did this video, Digital Performer falls into that category now. You can now run Digital Performer, which used to be Mac only, on Windows 2. Digital Performer, used by all the film composing guys out there, or a lot of them, doesn't really have it. It has some really great plugins, and their Live Room is one of my favorite plugins. I just wish um, other manufacturers would do something similar to that. But it doesn't have many, and it doesn't have many good instruments, surprisingly, as they have a really good synth and sampler, so I don't know why they don't bundle that. Anyway, that's another story. So if you bear in mind that with Cubase, Ableton, 
digital performer, Studio One, you may have to budget for more instruments. Also, with Logic, for example, I really, this is personal, I really like the take comping and the way that take comping works. Uh, and creating track stacks as, as buses. Those are little things that I, you know, happy to demonstrate in videos if that would be useful for you guys, of, of some of the reasons why I chose Logic and why Logic works for me. Pro Tools, Elastic Audio, Beat Detective, fantastic. If you're doing lots of drum editing, fantastic. And as I said in a previous video, Reaper is up there now. And I was in a studio recently and the guy was running Reaper and he showed me how he was doing his drum editing uh, with some shortcuts. And that was pretty uh, phenomenal also. The short version is, how do you choose a day AW? Well, make a list, but ultimately just decide where your brain is. Are you the musician creative, or are you more the engineer, recording engineer, mixing engineer, that kind of thing. If you are, then maybe Pro Tools is your thing. If you are more into writing and creating, then perhaps one of the others is your. Love to hear your questions, love to hear your thoughts on this. I know this is a very emotive, powerful subject. So please do leave uh, comments in the uh, box below. I've been Brucey, I've been a bit croaky. Hopefully you've heard all that. Um, most importantly, take care of yourselves and I will catch you later.